Yeah, so in our sourdough recipe, we actually, when we're proving our dough, we used a Pyrex dish, which is this here. Um, basically, Pyrex is just a brand. It's one that's readily available here in Ireland, but you could use pretty much anything you have, like a cast iron dish, a casserole dish. It's, the concept is exactly the same. The idea is to create a little chamber in which the dough to bake. I suppose the benefit of using a Pyrex dish is it actually has the flat lid. Um, so when you flip it upside down, it's got a flat surface to work on where a lot of dishes often have a little, li little handle, a lid, so it's very hard to use. So the one we use is two and a half liters, um, which is perfect for the likes of an eight, 900 gram loaf of bread. So the size dish that you use largely just depends on how much dough that you have. Obviously you don't want to fill it completely. You need to leave room for which the dough is going to prove and rise. Online, realistically, is probably your best bet. A lot of ours actually comes in from companies in Germany. Depending on kind of where you're from, uh, flour is often graded and has a different name. I suppose in the UK and Ireland, we generally call it strong flour. The idea it's made from a harder wheat, so it's got a higher level of protein, generally about 11 to 12%, and it's your protein that equals your gluten. Um, so when it comes to bread, it's often known as bread flour. Um, again, for example, the French and the Italians would have a slightly different gradient system than we would, like the French would be T65, we call it strong, a lot of people call it bread flour. It's all exactly the same thing, just depending on kind of where you're from, the mill might have attached a slightly different name. The difference between a starter and a Levan is absolutely nothing. They're exactly the same thing, it's just a different name. Um, so yeah, you'll often find that you've got your starter culture, your mother, the Levan, they're all exactly the same thing. Again, it's just a different name has been applied to it, but they're the same thing. You'd have seen the sourdough starter recipe that we used, and as I say, when you kind of look through online, you see a lot of different variations, how to make different starters between soaking grapes, using yogurt. To be honest, um, simply flour and water is absolutely perfect. So the ideal um, flour to use when starting off your starter is probably like a stone ground organic wholemeal flour. Um, the idea being all the nutrients are still trapped within the grain, so it's exactly what you need. So, and by going stone ground, you know that all the full grain is still contained within the flour. Um, and again, organic is a great way to ensure that there's been nothing added to the flour. When it comes to your sourdough starter, um, for example, I would actually have two starter cultures. I have one that's based on white flour and one that's based on rye flour. So this is just our rye one here. Um, you'll see it's kind of that much, much darker in color. And it's got a much stronger flavor. The, probably the only difference is once I got my starter up and going on my daily feeding, I simply use rye flour as opposed to say in using white flour. Um, but ideally, yeah, the flour you're going to bake with is try to hold on to that. Um, so if you're just using a white starter, um, make sure you're just using a good quality white bread flour. So you will notice in this sourdough starter recipe that we suggest that you discard some halfway through the process. Simply the only reason we do this, um, and you don't have to, is to stop you building up too much. Because ideally the ratios we work off is whatever quantity of sourdough starter we have, we add the same weight of flour, same weight of water. So for example, if you had 500 grams, you would add 500 flour, 500 water, which takes you up to 1500 grams. For the home baker, that's quite a lot. And then the more you have, if the more you have to feed, which is in, realistically is going to start costing you more because you have to keep adding more and more flour. So the next time you feed it, it would be 1,500 grams of flour, 1,500 grams of water. So simply the only reason we discard it um, is just to stop you building up too much. If you don't have to discard it. If you want to keep it all, feel free. If you really don't want to throw any of the starter away, um, I found it works great used in pancake batter, works great for waffles. I've actually made um, a chocolate brownie using it. So you can feel free to improvise and use it um, where, where it needs to be. As I say again, just don't build up too much because you will have more to feed and more to look after. So ideally we recommend that the starter is fed once a week. Um, 
Now it is quite resilient. You can push it up to about 10 days or so, but you'll often kind of find as the starter gets neglected, this kind of gray liquid starts to form on the top of it. So that's a bit of a cry for help. Your starter starting to die off. Um, so ideally if that happens, just pour the liquid away, don't mix it back in and feed it. You're gonna have, you might kind of find that you're gonna have to feed the starter for two to three days continuously in order to bring it back to full strength. If you're kind of maybe only baking once a week and you're kind of keeping your starter in the fridge and you're kind of, so as you take it out, I generally would recommend, for example, as you're baking on a Saturday morning, uh, which generally a lot of people tend to do when they have a bit more time, take it out of the fridge on a Friday, maybe before you go to work, leave it sitting in your kitchen, just allow it to take the chill off, allow it to kind of come up to room temperature. That evening, whatever weight you have, for example, you'll have 200 grams, simply add in 200 flour, 200 water, stir it together, leave it sitting in your kitchen, just cover it over. Um, and the next morning you're gonna find it lovely and bubbly, lovely and active, ready to make your bread. Take what you need to make your bread and then whatever's left over. Uh, you have two options really. You can pop it straight back in the fridge, it'll be perfectly fine. Or again, you can feed it before it goes back into the fridge. Uh, just depends again, I suppose, how long it is gonna be until you bake again the next time. So a great way to store your starter if you kind of find you're not going to be baking for a little while and you don't want to have to kind of keep feeding it, is you can freeze it. Um, freeze is absolutely perfect. Again, you might find when you let it thaw out, you might need to feed it for two or three days, again, just to bring it back up to full health. The reason we would auto laser though is the idea, very simply, it's a simple process. It simply involves the mixing together of flour and water, which allows you to kind of condition the flour, allows it to hydrate fully. Um, also allows us to slightly extend our fermentation process. But I didn't really want to overcomplicate things too much. The idea is we're trying to keep this nice and simple and encourage as much people to bake as possible. Of course, we can get a little bit more technical. I generally found auto days is great when you're kind of using like a whole grain flour. Um, because it, particularly with the likes of the bran and the fiber within the grain, it does take a little bit more time to hydrate. So autolase is a great benefit there. Also, it's a nice process to use when using much wetter doughs because it allows you to build up some strength within the dough, which I find much easier to work with. So it just depends on the recipe. Um, not every recipe requires it. Converting, say, um, a yeasted recipe to a sourdough recipe, it, it, of course it is possible, um, but you're going to find that it, it, won't, it will produce slightly different things. I suppose with a lot of yeasted breads, it tend to might be a little bit softer um, than say what we have with our starter culture here. But I suppose the easiest kind of ratio to work off, for example, as bakers, we typically work in percentages um, and we'll always regard flour as 100% and everything else is a percentage of that. So for example, for a yeasted bread, a very simple recipe would be 100% uh, flour, you have 2% salt and 2% yeast. So for example, you've got 500 grams of flour. Most basic recipes based on fresh yeast would be 10 grams of fresh yeast, which is exactly 2%. But if we wanted to convert that to a starter, a good starting point is about 30%. So if you were, say, working off a kilo of flour, that'd be 300 grams of sourdough starter. Um, as opposed to say with our yeast, where it would only be 20 grams. So that's probably the ratio we use is a little bit different. But again, when you're converting recipes over, you think logically, think about the effect that it has. If you're kind of using kind of a wet starter like we do, you will find that it's going to add additional hydration to your dough. So you might find that you need to hold back a little bit more liquid so you can keep that lovely balance. No, uh, when it comes to shaping your bread, you, you can shape it any way you like. Um, you can use, it can be, in a tin, it can be round, it can be square, it can be any shape of life. It just depends on what you're actually going to prove it in or what you're going to bake it in um, and what the process is. And it's, it's only a visual thing, really. It doesn't make a difference to actually how it bakes. So you could be using a loaf tin, no problem. You have very little Pyrex dishes. You can use individual little rolls. Just depends on um, what you're trying to achieve. Typically, I do find with most sourdough loaves in particular, is they do bake better free form rather than in a tin. Tend to produce more volume, um, help to create a kind of a better crust rather than say baking it straight in a tin. But again, use whatever you have at home. Um, if you've only got a few loaf tins, use that. That's how it works absolutely perfect. <laughs> Depends on what day of the week it is, really. Uh, 
quite a few staff at the bakery, I'm sure I could think of it from time to time. <laughs> who, who down thumbs sourdough videos? <laughs> People with a lot of hate in their life. <laughs> Sadly, yes. <laughs>